All right, so when we left off, we had made these sketches and they were based on the different references. I'm gonna go ahead and make my reference folder pretty big here. Or maybe even shrink the icons just a little bit so I can see them all. So within my finder, I can view the view options and I can take my icon size down. So I can see the green images at the top and the orange, image, orange images underneath and decide which one do I want to do. Now I like both of them, but looking at these compositions here, this one's kind of very central. It has a focal point in the middle and it's just kind of balanced on both sides and it's a little, little dull. And landscapes, you know, are typically landscape format. I do a lot of those. So I think I'm going to go with this one this time. So I'm going to use my move tool with my guides and my rulers are turned on. You can turn those on and off with command R. I'm going to click on the ruler and bring down a guide to crop this image. And this is important because I noticed that I don't have a perfect format yet, rectangular format. So when I use the crop tool, I want to make sure I leave enough space around it. And now I can use my transform tool, command T, and I can use skew and distort to make sure it fills the space a little bit more comfortably. As this will be the blueprint for my reference images. So I always start with skew and then I'll, I'll kind of end off with distort, which gives you a little bit more freedom but it's nice to have the kind of rigid parameters of skew so you don't mess up your, your original image too much. All right, so there's my plan. I've got one, two, three, four, five references together. It's pretty straightforward. Here they are. I can zoom in on those now. And now that I have my, my finished kind of cropped sketch, I need to make sure this is large enough resolution and large enough size to be my finished landscape. So right now it's only three and some inches by six inches. So I'm going to go up to image size and I'm going to check that my resolution is at least 350. And then that my physical inches are within our printer capability and maybe even a little bit larger than our printer capability, which is up to 13 by 19 inches. So I make sure that resample is checked and that allows me to change this. So I'm gonna change the height to 19 inches and that takes it from only being seven megabytes to being 72 megabytes, and that's fine. And because I sketched it dig digitally, it will make it look a little bit blurrier, but it should be still very perfectly readable. But now there's a lot more pixels making up each of those lines in my sketch. Okay, now I'm going to save it. File, save as, because this is no longer a sketch. This is going to become my assignment. And it's very important to have them saved as two different things. Um, because you're going to upload your sketch or your sketches as your first part of this assignment. So this will be Carl Fry or Carl Fantasy Landscape Assignment. I can put number one there if I want. As a Photoshop file, PSD. And I'm going to save it right to the desktop. So I can see that it's saved as a separate object. Right there. All right. Now, instead of just dragging and dropping my reference on like this and then moving it in and doing what we've done before with cartoon jumbles. The problem is I want to be able to see my images and kind of cut them out before I put them on. So instead of doing that, I'm going to build, oops, I'm going to build extra space around my image. So I go to image canvas size, separate than image size. And this is basically growing the paper around it. And I'm gonna start in the middle and it's up to you, but I like to grow it about the size of a drafting table, a small drafting table. 
So that would be about 30 inches by 40 inches. And I'm going to anchor it right in the center where my sketch is. And then as a canvas extension color, I'm just going to choose white. And so it builds all this white space around my image. But notice my guides are still showing me where my clear image is. So even if I turned off my sketch, I know that this is the area that I'm building an image within. No, it should be, um, you should be able to zoom in. Oh, you mean, uh, should it be a clear, clear grid or not? If it's a clear grid, it's okay. We can, um, that's just because under the fill color. Here, I'll do it again and I'll show you what that might look like. So if I extended the canvas even more, and I just say canvas extension color, uh, well, this is making me choose. <laughs> but if you're doing it on something that's not a background layer, it, it will just extend it as an empty space. But that's fine, because we can fill that with white space with an extra layer. So let me see if I can imitate that. So I'll take out the background. And then all I would do if I get something like this, or where my sketch is in the middle, I guess would look like this. And those were merged together, just like I had scanned something or, or taken a photograph of a sketch from my sketchbook. And then I increased my canvas size. Yes, it would look like this. And that's fine, too. Um, if you wanted to change that, you would create a new layer, and you would fill it, edit, fill. And you might even choose to fill it with something other than white. You could use 50% gray, and then run it behind your sketch. So you know what is the desktop, basically, for your collage, and what is your, your working area. Okay, now I'm going to lock those layers using a little padlock. And now I'm going to bring on my reference. So it looks like this was number three. This was number two. This was number four. <laughs> this was number five. So this must be number one, this rock and lake. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. Now it's going to come in, and it's going to fill the space as a smart object. And it's going to look really pixelated until I hit return and place it. So what I'm going to do is before I place it, I'm going to hold down shift. It already has a transform box. And I'm going to roughly size it to what I had in mind. So something about that size, in this case, maybe a little larger. Then I hit return. Now notice it is a smart layer. So if I try to erase from it, it won't let me, because it's still a smart layer. So. What I recommend is you take your lasso and you roughly cut out the areas you think you might be able to use. So in my case, it's the water in this rock. And I loop around it. And I'm actually going to say view um, and uncheck snap so it doesn't affect my lasso selections to be around my guides. Or I can just hit command semicolon to hide my guides because I don't really need them anymore. Okay, now that I've lassoed that part of the reference, I am going to duplicate just that selection by hitting Command J. And because I did that, if I turn off the smart layer behind it, I now have a rasterized cutout from that smart layer that I can edit further and I can size further and kind of place in. I might just put that off to the side for now. But if I ever needed it, I have the full smart layer from my reference. So if I accidentally take off too much or if I need something else from this reference, I have it there cataloged. I'm just going to turn it off. Now I'll bring in my next element, the bridge. It doesn't matter if you work from the foreground to the background or the background to the foreground. The bridge is already sized pretty much where I want it, but I'm going to cut this out. I don't want to leave any hard edges.
So I'm not sure quite how much of this bridge I want, but I know I don't want these sharp horizontals and verticals. So I draw my selection with the lasso tool and then hit Command J. That makes a copy of it on another layer. I turn off the smart layer behind and I move this off to the side. And even if I move it off to the side where it's not visible, I don't lose those pixels. They're still there. I would only lose them if I cropped it. All right, now, let's see, number three, that was this. I'm going to scale it down a little bit, holding down shift. Hit return to place it. Use the lasso tool. A rough cut around it, making puzzle pieces out of it. Allowing for a lot of things to overlap. And then hit command J and then turn off the reference behind it and then move it out of, out of place. And then I might transform this even a little smaller. Okay, I've got three out of five here. Number four is this big background rock. But it doesn't need to be quite that big. So there it is. This one's pretty straightforward. This one I actually, I'm gonna be replacing the sky and then all of this is gonna get covered up. So when I lasso it, I might just roughly cut right above its, its skyline, because that will get replaced. And then roughly cut in here. I don't know, I just really believe in not having those hard edges. So that you're reminded that you have to treat every edge. Put this off to the side here, and now the sky. And this little floating island in the background there. And again, this one's mostly covered up. But what am I actually using? This chunk here. Duplicate it, turn it off. So these are what I call the puzzle pieces. And each of them is, is now editable and rasterized. So now I'm going to work from the background forward. And I'm going to put them in. And I'm going to take their opacity down just a little bit. So I can use my sketch to help me place them. So I want the floating island there. I can use transform. There we go. I can turn on auto select layer with my move tool. So all I have to do is, is uh, click on the layer to select it. And then I can move the layers I need on top of other layers. So now this one is next on top. Take its opacity down a little bit. So I can see my sketch. Put this in place. Next, move this on top of everything, take its opacity down just a little bit, just enough so I can kind of see the sketch. Goes right about there. And then the bridge. Now my sketch has it there, but I think I'm going to have to compress that a little bit because I need more overlap. And so this step will also kind of show the challenges of your reference. And you might decide you need, you know, additional reference. I'll need to fill in the sky in little places. And then this big water hole
something like that. 